All right, what's up everybody? This is Sam from Zorodor Meme Bet. In this video, we're doing my full card predictions and betting strategy for UFC Fight Night 189, Rosie Strike versus Sakai. Just real quick, gonna be showing to you guys the latest results from the last the past two weeks, which I haven't shown yet. And uh, real quick, if you have been following me, you know that uh, I have nearly 800% profit this year. If I'm be comparing the amount that I've bet and the amount of return, and in terms of unit size for the year, I'm up uh, nearly 60%, and from the start of the channel, 120%. All right, so in the last couple of events in UFC 262, I had uh, some losses. So I was down 32% in terms of uh, the event, and uh, nearly three and a half units down, but for the last event it was pretty great, my accuracy was massive, nearly 90% accuracy on the peaks and on the bets as well, and uh, you know, basically doubled the the amount that I bet, and it was 13.35% units profit. I also separate these things guys into some charts, so you guys can see the evolution through time, so February I was more profitable than May was quite uh, average, let's put it this way. I also separate all my bets into high, medium and low, so you guys can see the profit in each segment, all right? So if you have never seen me, here I am. I'll be dividing this video as follows. I'll be first talking about uh, all the picks and the bets, and then on to the breakdowns, and uh, if you wish to support the channel, feel free to stick around till the end. I'll be also showing in the end the patron results, because it's basically the same as you guys have seen, but also line by line, how did I do, and if you wish to follow me, uh, I'm gonna show you how, all right? So before starting, guys, if you don't follow me yet on Instagram, if you'd like to start following, I put the bets that I take, some of them up on, up on, pay, uh, on uh, Instagram first. So here's some bets that I'm taking. I'll be obviously talking about here, but just so you guys would like to follow me, you get this already, all right? So on to the picks and the bets, as we spoke about. So between Roman Dolitze and Laureano Storapoli, the bets hasn't yet been released, but I'm picking Dolitze. I'm and if 60% uh, by my calculations, Dolitze should be 60% favorite. Probably I'm gonna be parlaying Dolitze. Mason Jones versus Alan Patrick. I'm picking Jones, but I'm gonna be passing on this one. Muslim Salikov versus Francisco Trinaldo, another one that the bets hasn't the odds haven't yet been released. I'm picking Salikov, probably I'm gonna be passing too. Sean Woodson versus Yusef Zalau. I'm picking Woodson, but gonna be betting Zalau, small bet. Um, Makwana, small bet, like 1% of my money on Zalau. Makwana Mirkani versus Nate Landor. I'm picking uh, Mirkani. I'm gonna be putting him, him in some parlays, I think. I'm yet to, to confirm, I'll let you guys know. Manon Firo versus Marina Moroz. I'm picking Firo, but uh, not gonna be betting the fight. Montana De La Rosa versus Ariane Lipsky. I'm picking and betting Lipsky, 2.25% of my money. This is a uh, this is the biggest bet of, that I have alongside Antonio Arroyo that we're gonna be speak, spot, talk about soon. Miguel Beza versus Santiago Ponzinibbio. I'm picking Beza, I'm not gonna be betting the fight. Jordan Levitt versus Claudio Poeas. I'm picking Levitt, not gonna be betting the fight. Turner Bowser versus Ilir Latifi. Picking Bowser, but not betting the fight. At least in terms of straight bets, probably I'm going to be betting Latifi by decision if the price is right. Martin Tibura versus Walt Harris. I'm picking Tibura, not going to be betting the fight. Dusko Todorovic versus Maki Pitolo. This fight has been cancelled. I was uh, picking and betting Pitolo. And Tom Breeze versus Antonio Arroyo. I'm picking and betting Arroyo. Uh, biggest bet of the card alongside Ariane Lipsky. All right. So, guys, this is a quite big card. I think it's nearly 14 fights to cover. I'll do my best here to make this concise and interesting to you guys. Obviously, feel free to ask me questions. Let me know how you guys are betting the fight, if you agree with my analysis or not, all right? So between Staropoli versus Dolitze, basically, I can say that it's a striker versus grappler, not because none of them can grapple or uh, or the other can strike, it's just the style that they match up. Staropoli is a guy that likes to use his range, his uh, straight punches, he throws way more volume on the feet, avoids the, the clinch and the grappling. He can shoot a double leg, he's not bad in this regard, as I'm putting here. He's basically average, which is not bad, but uh, he fences himself a little bit more on the offensive striking. Whereas Dolice, he's not a bad striker himself, can throw good leg kicks from the outside, can throw some hooks, can uh, swing a little bit. He's got some power, he's a big middleweight, but he's a better, uh, his best asset is by far his grappling. He's a good Greco-Roman wrestler, 
very good submission game, you know, especially the leg locks. So that's basically what the way they they match up. I think that we're gonna see the lead size uh, wear a little bit on Staropoli because Staropoli was a welterweight. He was not a small welterweight, but he's not gonna be a big middleweight as well. You know, he doesn't have much range. So I think Dolitz is gonna uh, shoot on him, gonna wear on him. I I would say that uh, if Dolitz adjusts himself a little bit instead of going for so much so many leg locks, if he controls Starapoli, he's a very good favorite, you know, because I think he's gonna wear on Starapoli. But if Starapoli has good straight shots, you know, he can start landing. He has a chance. So I don't know who's gonna be the the favorite and the dog here. I have um, uh, Dolitz as a favorite. Just, let me just fix this one real quick. So I have uh, Dolitz as a favorite, nearly 60% favorite, like I said. Probably I'm gonna be parlaying Dolitz because I think, uh, you know, he's gonna probably win this fight wearing on Starapoli. You know, both of these guys have quite similar cardio levels, even though Starapoli is five years younger. He doesn't have much size, you know, and he doesn't have the, the best cardio as well, you know. So it's quite even in this regard. I think we're gonna see Dolitz's size uh, be the difference in this fight, you know. So, like I said, I have Dolitz a 60% favorite. These are my, my calculations, guys. Feel free to pause here and take a look. On to the next fight, Makwan Amir Kani versus Nate Landwer. It's not an easy, uh, not too easy to predict. Let me just fix this one. This is outdated. So, I'm back here. So, basically, it's it's again somehow striker versus grappler, but in, based on styles mostly. Because um, both of these guys are quite even on the on the striking, I could say. You could make an argument that Landwehr is the better striker. He probably he probably is better, has a better, not better technique, you know, but he throws so much more volume that he has the edge on the strike, even though I rated them pretty same. Because Amir Khan is quite dangerous himself, you know, when he starts throwing straight punches and flying knees, he's improving his strike quite well. But it, he's not... Uh, He's not a good striker because he doesn't throw enough, basically, you know, he doesn't have much experience on striking. So that's why uh, I think Lander has the, the edge, but it's so thin that I think I would feel more comfortable rating them the same. But Amir Khan is a good grappler, everybody knows that. He's not the best wrestler, but he improved through the years. He's dangerous there, he has a good control, you know, he has very good submissions, he has long arms for the division. So it's gonna be quite a tough matchup for Landwer, if I'm honest, you know. But Landwer is a tough guy. He definitely has the has the will, the heart to win this fight. You know, he's gonna keep pushing forward. He has a good takedown defense. It's not easy to control him. It's not easy to submit him. So he could be in this fight very much. You know, if he keeps pushing, Amir Khan he doesn't like much the pressure. When he starts getting pressure, he shoots. You know, and. Uh, yeah, it's difficult to predict from there. I think Landwer gonna be taken down. He's gonna be controlled a little bit, you know. But uh, I may be wrong here. If Landwer can keep it standing, if he can sprawl and keep uh, Amir Khani on his back foot, he definitely has a chance to win. So I think the safest pick is Amir Khani. You know, I'm going by decision, but I, I would be very much interested in betting Landwer as well by decision because, like I said, I think he he can push the f he can push forward. You know, he can uh, wear on uh, Amir Khani. Right, but uh, like I said, it's quite difficult to predict. Actually, I put in the spreadsheet that I'm gonna be betting parlaying Amir Khan, but I would like to parlay him my, at least at minus 170. So I don't know if I'm gonna be really throwing that. I'll let you guys know if I update that. All right, but these are my calculations. I have Amir Khan nearly 60% favorite, so I'd be happy if I can get him at minus 170 or something. But I think at minus 250, minus 300 range is quite. Risky. There's not much value on Amir Khan at those lines, and then uh, in this case, I would probably go in with Landwer. You know, by decision, as I, like I put in, I'm putting here. I think Landwer has 25% chances that he go that he can, uh, you know, get in, get a decision win. I also have Landwer with some chances for the, the TKO. I like him a little bit at round three by TKO. You know, but it has to be something like this plus 2,000 something like this to be worth a bet. You know. And rather than that, I think Amir Khan has good chances for the decent chance for TKO and good chances for the submission. So Amir Khan inside the distance was not bad either, at least at plus 300, plus 400 range. All right. On to the next fight, Tom Breeze versus Antonio Arroyo. Another good matchup. I, I think they are quite similar in, in, the, in the quality of the strikes, you know, but very different styles. Breeze more like a boxer, likes to use lots of jabs, angles, you know. 
use some fancy movements, you know, some fancy boxing movements. Arroyo is more like a standard guy, keeps the standard kickboxer, holds the center, smashing body kicks, arm kicks to the heads, you know, good straight punches. Both of them have good uh, ground games, you know. Breeze is more technical, but Breeze doesn't have much wrestling as Arroyo does. Arroyo is not a wrestler, but he has a good double leg, you know. He has a, he's a big guy for the division, very strong. He can muscle guys down, he can shoot double legs. And he's not bad from top, you know, he's not easy to submit. So I'm f I'm rating them both at three stars, which I think is pretty good. And uh, yeah, both of these guys have good game plans. I like Arroyo a little bit better here, guys, just because he's a little bit bigger. You know, I know that Breeze is taller, 6'3", Arroyo is probably 6'2", you know, or 6'3", as well. No, Arroyo is 6'3". So, but I see Arroyo way more, way stronger, you know, and I don't like much Breeze uh, consistency throughout the fight, you know, when he starts uh losing you know and when he gets challenged he kind of fades a little bit so i don't maybe we're gonna see breeze starting off well with his jab with straight shots but i think at some point or we're gonna start putting some pressure on him smashing some kicks to those arms i don't think breeze is gonna like that i think arroyo also can shoot in this uh, uh in the end of the rounds you know you know he has to be careful there because breeze is a very good grappler dangerous with submissions but i think arroyo is the guy that's gonna basically land with more power no, and I think he's gonna edge a decision. That's why I'm going with uh, Arroyo here. I have him as like a, a minus 130 favorite or 55 percent favorite. The line shows him at plus two to plus 195. You know, so to me it's a very good bet. I like bet on Arroyo. It's my biggest bet, like I said. And uh, these are my calculation, guys. These are some comments. Feel free to pause here. And um, this is wrong. Okay. And uh, yeah, I expect this goes to the decision here, the real odds by my calculations. You know, so if you can basically get a, an over prop at minus 130, maybe it's worth it and over one and a half and, you know, plus 120, something like this on the on this, on this the over two and a half may be interesting too. I have like a Royal 30, 23% as a as decision. So a Royal inside the distance or a Royal decision is quite tricky. You know, but uh, I think Arroyo by decision is uh, the safest pick. And also, yeah, Breeze can submit Arroyo like I'm putting here. Maybe not as much as I'm putting, you know, but uh, yeah, I think uh, I think Arroyo is a decent favorite and I like it better on Arroyo. All right, on to the next fight, uh, Claudio Pueyes versus Jordan Levitt. Another interesting one. Both of these guys are very good grapplers. Different styles, though. Pueyes, a guy that uses lots of wrestling, good uh, ground and pound. Not bad from top, you know, from the bottom, uh, Puey is not the best, he kind of flattens himself on, on his back, you know, it's not easy to take him down, he's a very good wrestler, but uh, he's not as technical in the BJJ as Levitt is, but Levitt, um, basically he's a grappler, you know, he has a decent double leg, but I haven't seen much of his gra of his wrestling because he, he can pull guard, he generally he wears on guys and use the leg trips inside, so it's tough to deal with this guy. But uh, in terms of striking, I think Pueyes has the edge, you know, because, again, I haven't seen much from Levitt. He basically uses his strikes to get inside and shoot, so it's tough to tell if he has good striking or not. But I think he doesn't have much striking, which makes this matchup very tricky to call, because Pueyes seems to be the better wrestler. Levitt the better technical grappler, but an MMA match could be quite even. And Pueyes, I think, has the, the striking on this matchup. Not much defensively because he gets hit quite a lot. But uh, I think if he's, he can keep it standing, he may be arguably the favorite here, Pueyes. But it's tough to tell. I think at the end, Levitt going to wear on him. Levitt seems to be the, the stronger guy as well. I ended up going with Levitt by submission. Let me fix this one here, guys. I apologize. So, to me, so I'm going with Levitt by submission or decision. It's diff difficult to tell. Probably this, this decision, you know, even though I put submission here, so it's pretty tough to tell which one. Because I think uh, Levitt has enough skills to submit Pueyes, but uh, yeah, Levitt by submission or decision. Pueyes by decision actually may be the best bet for this one, as I think uh, we're going to be able to find this, these odds for Pueyes by decision. Because Pueyes, like I said, he can keep it standing, he has the, he has, uh, can do more damage, but I don't think he finishes Levitt, at least not going to be easy. You know, so these are my calculations, guys. So, yeah, feel free to pause here, take a look at this thing, it's worth your time. 
On to the next fight. Uh, this has been cancelled. Move it to Dolice versus Staropoli that we spoke about already. Then on, this one has also been cancelled. Pitolo versus Todorovic. Then Montana de la Rosa versus Ariane Lipsky. This is an interesting one. Montana is the better grappler here, the better wrestler, but um, she has she has uh, throughout the years struggled with her striking. She struggles to be effective, you know. Even though I rate her pretty well, because as a as a woman uh, flyweight, she, she's an average striker, you know. But I think gonna be difficult to, to strike against Lipsky because the queen of violence, she's a uh, she pushes forward, you know, when she starts seeing off, she's super dangerous. The problem with this girl is that he, she's a little bit inconsistent, you know. When she starts coming, she's dangerous, like I said, but she doesn't come that often. She she throw, she fights in bursts, you know, and then she can find herself in close fights because she kind of watches her opponent in the mirror for quite some time, you know, ends up losing a, a technical striking battle. I don't know, I have a feeling that uh, Lipsky gonna somehow adapt her style here. She has to at some point, you know, because uh, otherwise she's gonna keep losing fights. I may be wrong here, but I think she she's gonna evolve also because she has moved to the US, she's under better training camp, you know. I think she wins this matchup basically because Montana struggles with the striking, Montana wears the damage pretty bad, you know. She's a decent uh, wrestler, a good grappler, but I think Lipsky has enough size and uh, if she trains right, she, she can stuff those takedowns, not gonna be that difficult. And once she starts landing, I don't think uh, Montana gonna like it. She's gonna probably panic again, you know, and uh, she could get finished even, you know. So I don't like much Lipsky consistency. She doesn't have the best game plan, you know. She's, she loses the fights that she should win. But still, I think she has a good size advantage on this matchup, you know, and uh, definitely a power advantage. So I'm going with Lipsky, you know, especially she's one plus one sixty dog. I like it, you know. De La Rosa, very tough girl. Lipsky could finish her, but I think most likely it's, uh, if Lipsky gonna win this, gonna be by decision because De La Rosa is very tough, you know. And uh, these are my odds, guys. I think Lipsky, by my calculation, should be a minus 140 favorite. She's at plus 165 dog, so I like this bet, you know. And like I said, I think Lipsky pushes the, the pace, does more damage, stuff the takedowns, and keeps repeating, basically, you know. But Montana, if Montana can out-wrestle her, hold her down, she's the favorite, as the bookies have. But I think uh, we're going to see Lipsky uh, improving here, all right? So basically, these are my calculations. To me, Lipsky is a 60% favorite. And uh, yeah, Lipsky by decision. I have some good, decent chance on Lipsky by uh, TKO. I don't think Montana can submit Lipsky because Montana is good, you know, with the submissions, but not outstanding. She doesn't like chain much or anything, you know. She could finish Lipsky if she takes her back or something. I don't think it's gonna happen that, that easily, especially because I think Lipsky has improved her her training quality, you know, but if I'm wrong on this regard, yeah, De La Rosa could finish her even, you know, but uh, if you like Montana, I would say go by decision, I I would give like 25% that Montana can edge her on a decision by out grappling, you know, so these are my calculation, guys, feel free to pause here. To the next fight, Alan Patrick versus Mason Jones. This one is another interesting one, Jones is a pressure fighter, you know, he, he has a crazy volume, he keeps pushing, you know, he gets hit quite a bit. His chin is up, so it's quite tricky. If you if you're thinking that Jones is a lock or something, he has never been TKO'd. You know, Patrick's not a guy known by by his uh, KO ability. But I would be careful a little bit here. You know, if you if you're parlaying Jones, I don't blame you, but I would be careful not to parlay him too much because uh, the chin is up. You know, Patrick is a big guy. He can swing. You know. And again, John has never been TKO'd, but I have seen him getting dropped, so be careful there, in my opinion, all right? But most likely, it's John's putting the pressure on. It's a quite tough match matchup for Patrick, because Patrick is known by his uh, power double legs, his grappling, but he has the he doesn't have the grappling in this matchup. Jones has a, has a black belt. I think he's a legit uh, black belt, even though I, I haven't seen him grappling from some uh, short... Uh, some snippet of uh, some videos. I think he's a good grappler, you know, he, he seems to be very aware, very uh, composed from his back, you know, can, seems that he can chain things together. So I think uh, it's a tough matchup for Patrick. Also, Patrick's 30, 35, where Jones is probably 
sorry, Patrick is 27 and Jones is 26, 37, 26. So I think Jones is quite a safe pick, you know. I have him like a minus to 30 favorite, but again, guys, I think it's uh, quite tricky to bet on this one because Jones, if he would tuck his chin and better his defense, I would say that Jones is also a lock, but he, he still carries his chin quite up, you know, and I think it's quite dangerous against a big guy as Patrick is, all right? But again, I'm not gonna be betting this fight. Maybe this unders may be interesting because if Patrick starts swinging on the first round, he has some chance. So maybe if I can find this one, I would take under one and a half at around plus 170 range, you know. Rather than that, these are my calculations. John is a strong favorite, 65%, you know. I would take probably Patrick by decision if I can catch him like plus 500, plus 600. It would be an interesting bet. Or even Patrick by straight bet if people bet John's crazy. If I can get Patrick at plus 400 dog, I would bet Patrick, all right. So that's basically it. So, Sean Woodson versus Yusef Zalau. Uh, again, maybe a striker versus a grappler, not because Zalau cannot grapple or Woodson uh, cannot strike or Woodson cannot grapple. But Woodson is ridiculously tall for us, a featherweight. The guy is 6'2 and a half, you know. He's not even 6'2, he's 6'2 and a half. So, if you are familiar to the centimeters, the guy is 1 meter 90 as a featherweight. It's just ridiculous. He's also very long, you know. And uh, he's no slouch, he has a good technique, he's dangerous with the flying knees and etc. You know, so this guy is legit. I'm not fancying him as five stars because I think he still can polish himself a little bit, but in the in the coming years, this guy gonna be definitely a five star striker in defensively and def offensively. Big guy, giant guy for the division, pretty good game plans, good camp, you know. His problem is uh, nowadays the the grappling, you know, and uh, when he gets pressure, which we're gonna see, Zalao, Zalao is no slouch, this guy is a great fighter, you know, he's a good striker, but uh, he's, a, he's a very good counter striker, it's not easy to hit this guy, you know, he has good timing. On the offensive part, he's also pretty good, you know, he's not the best because uh, he has good volume, but not much power, so I'm putting him like three stars. But uh, like I said, defensively, he's very good. His ground game is very good, you know. He uses uh, his wrestling pretty well. He's not doesn't have that much credentials, but he learned through the years and he has good pressure. So I'm giving him four star because pressure, good grappling, ground and pound, you know, uh, tenacity. He deserves four star here, guys. But uh, he's under not undersized, but uh, compared to Woodson, Woodson definitely has the, the, the size on him. But guys, I think it's a quite a tricky uh, fight to bet. To me, it's either a dog or a pass, even though I'm picking Woodson. And the reason is Zalao gonna clinch. Don't expect that Zalao gonna be a fool to just uh, trade technique for technique against the, the, the bigger, longer guy. Zalao gonna get inside, gonna gonna try to wrestle, wear on Woodson, you know, take him down, hold him down. Zalao is very patient. He's young too. You know, so it's a, it's a tricky matchup. I'm betting Zalao, you know, because I think he has a decent chance to win this fight. You know, like I'm putting here, I have him 45%, which is quite decent. I can get him at plus 170. I'm going to be also betting him by decision or fight goes to the decision as well. Because Woodson, even though he's very good striking, Zalao is not an easy guy to finish. Good chin, young guy, well trained, knows what he's going to have to do. This most likely goes to the decision, guys. So probably the best bet here or the safest would be fight go to the decision. I have Woodson as 35% decision chance and Zalao 20, 20, 25% basically. So as Zalao is a dog, you know, as I see him with a small chance to submit Woodson as well, I think Zalao is worth a bet. That's why I'm betting Zalao. But also I'm gonna be betting probably uh, Woodson by decision, I don't know, because I think going to be expensive, this line, but probably going to be betting the fight goes to the decision, parlaying plus allow by decision, all right? On to the next fight, Marina Moroz versus Manon Fioro. Another very good matchup. Fioro, she's been very impressive, you know, she's a great striker, lots of side kicks, head kicks, straight punches, she's a big, strong girl. She's not bad, a bad grappler. She can shoot double legs. She's not easy to take down. She's very strong, powerful, you know, athletic, fast. Moroz, she's um, she's not as, as as powerful and athletic and fast as Mor Fioro, but she she you know she's very aware of her strengths and her detriments. I think Moroz, she has improved throughout the years her strengths and conditioning. She's you can 
I call her a quite strong flyweight nowadays, you know. She's very dedicated to training, so that's why both of, of them are getting the same rating here. I think Manon Fioro has the edge on the striking, because Mor Moroz is a good counter-striker, it's tough to hit this girl, she keeps the jab pumping, the straight punches, she, she doesn't, she controls the distance very well, sorry about the noise guys, it, she controls the distance very well, but uh, yeah, Fioro, she, she, she kicks way more, you know, especially with the side kicks, so Fioro has the edge, but it's not easy to to call and the reason is Moroz she's gonna come ready for those side kicks there's no doubt about it she's gonna try to grapple with Fioro hold her on the clinch she's gonna try to out volume Fioro because Fioro good uh, lots of kicks like I said but not much uh, volume with the hands so we're gonna see Moroz with more volume on the hands so it's a quite tricky uh, fight Fioro is the favorite um, I have her at 60% favorite which would justify a bet on, on Fioro at the current lines, but I don't know guys, also Marina Moroz is in a good training camp, whereas uh, Fioro trains locally in France, if I'm not mistaken, so it's, it's a quite some X factors here that makes the the bet on a, on a favorite quite tricky, at least in my eyes, but uh, yeah, in this case, if you're forcing me to bet, I would bet Fioro, you know, but uh, to me it's a quite tricky one. Okay, so these are my calculations, Fioro by decision, probably very interesting because Moro is a tough girl. I don't think as powerful as good as Fioro is. I, I'm giving 20% chance for her to, to finish Moro's, but I think Fioro by decision is, is a little bit more likely I can put in here. Moro's by decision may be the best bet here because Moro is a dog. I think people are going to be betting Fioro quite a bit. So Moro's by decision, I think could catch her at plus 300 would be an interesting one in my opinion. Right, which is the next fight, uh, Manda Ribas versus Angela Hill. High level fight. I think uh, probably you guys know both of these girls if you're familiar to MMA. Ribas is excellent everywhere, but uh, she's the best at her when she can use her strength, her her offensive striking combined with her wrestling. She's very difficult to stop. She marches girls down. And she shoots, when she starts shooting and grappling, it's difficult to stop because she's technical, she's tenacious, she has good uh, pressure, good power. Her problem is a little bit the defensive striking because she gets hit, she's not that tall, long, so she has to get inside to strike and, she, and then she can start getting caught. She has been TKO'd twice, I've seen that recently against Marina Rodriguez. But uh, it's not that she has a bad chin or anything, it's just because she takes lots of risks and she can accumulate the damage. Angela Hill. Yeah, back, striking background, very good there, good power, good movement, good volume, you know, four star definitely in the both aspects. Learn the game, has decent double legs nowadays, decent control, good check down defense, but she's not going to grapple with Ribas, it's 100% sure that she's going to avoid the grappling, which going to make this similar to striking striker versus grappler, but I think Ribas, she would keep taking the chance, I don't think this girl going to be faced by her knockout loss but a uh, heel is the girl that's gonna be ready for her as well with the takedown defense ready it's not gonna be easy to too much to stop ribas because ribas uh, has good hands you know so it's a, it's quite difficult to stop ribas but from my eyes i'll take a shot i'll take a shot because to me it's a nearly a pick and fight i'm gonna be going with hill by decision because i'm betting hill too so just justify my justifies my pick and my bet so i think it's a very close fight I think Fariba start uh, teeing off on her, pushing her down, pushing her back and taking her down. I think we're gonna maybe see Ribas edging her on a clear decision, but I think Hyo gonna be red. She's gonna start landing. Ribas not gonna like it. She's gonna shoot. I think Hyo gonna defend most of those takedowns. Gonna you know push herself back against the cage, get up, keep trying to 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 damage Ribas. Could be a split decision either way. You know, I don't think Hyo gonna dominate this fight, but she's a good bet in my opinion because she has a small chance to TKO Ribas as well. So I'm betting Hyo at plus 150. Uh, this is wrong. Let me fix this one. Yep, so... I'm, I have uh, Ribas as a small favorite, but like, like I put, there is a variance on this thing, so to me it's nearly a pick him. I think uh, Ribas has some chance to submit uh, Hill, but I'm giving a little bit more chance that Hill finishes 
Rebus, but the Rebus has more chance for the decision. So as you guys see, it's a difficult one. But uh, like I said, I'm picking a betting hill. I might probably, sorry about the noise, guys, be betting hill also by decision. All right, on to the next fight. Santiago Ponzinibbio versus Miguel Beza. They match up quite similarly here, as you guys can see by my the stars that I have for them. Both of them good strikers. Ponzinibbio has more volume, has more angles, you know. Can argue a little bit more fluidity on the feet. Beza has a little bit more power. He's a... Uh, Ponzinibbio is tougher to hit, but uh, he doesn't have a good chin. At least from what I've seen, okay? And Beza has a good chin. At least he's still quite fresh. Actually, he can get... He can be hit, he can be hurt. Even though he has never been TKO, there are some fights that he can get pushed back and, and start getting hit. He's nearly got dropped some fights, I don't quite remember which fight now. But uh, he doesn't pro he's probably gonna see Beza being TKO'd throughout his career. So Ponzinibbio also can be the guy doing that nowadays and at this matchup. But uh, I think it's a, it's a matchup gonna be quite competitive. We're gonna see Ponzinibbio trying to be aggressive, he always is. You know, Beza trying to crack him. I'm kind of was back and forth there, you know. Uh, I saw that people bet Ponzinibbio at plus 130 dog, you know. I didn't catch the line there, but I still I'm not gonna be betting this because I have Beza, but I'm not too confident on him. But I think Beza still he's a little bit younger, has more power. Can uh, Ponzinibbio can be hurt? Beza can also take him down, you know, if he overextends. So I think Beza is a small favorite, but it's quite difficult to bet in my opinion. Even though I have Beza as TKO. You know, let's see on the pro bets when they open up, you know, but uh, as of now, uh, I think it's a very tricky fight to bet, all right? These are my calculations, guys. Feel free to pause here and uh, take a look. Francisco Trinaldo versus Muslin Salikov. Another interesting one. At first, I thought that Salikov would dominate this fight. Trinaldo, he's improving. The guy's 42, but he's still improving, which is pretty impressive, you know? He moved to, to ATT recently, so... That's why probably we're seeing from him improving. And uh, he can make this competitive, especially if he starts to use his grappling in this matchup, because Salikov is an elite striker. You know, spins, straight shots, great counters, you know, this guy is super dangerous when he tees off also. He could be nearly 5-star here, but the thing is that he's not the biggest uh, for the division, so that's why I'm rating him 4, but could be easily 5-star as a striker. He's difficult to take down, he can take guys down, but I think... Uh, if we're gonna see grappling gonna be from Trinaldo trying to hold him on the clinch tank, clinch take him down, which makes this thing quite interesting. That the line hasn't yet been released. I think uh, Salikov is a, the favorite, having like 55, a more, leaning more towards 60% favorite with Salikov, also because he's a little bit younger. You know, he's 36, which is not too young, but against Trinaldo 42, even though Trinaldo is more like this, uh, has this freaking genetic guys like. Uh, Yomel Royero type of thing that the guy keeps improving, looking better at the 42, which is incredible. But uh, again, it makes this tough to call because Trinado is moving to welterweight, which may be interesting because he's gonna be even, you know, more solid, more compact and stronger. And also, he moved to ATT recently, so there are so many questions to this fight. And Salikov, even though he's a five-star striker, far to five-star striker, in the past he used it to use too much single strikes, so it could be a weird, uh, not weird, but a split decision or a decision in favor of Trinaldo. So it's a quite tricky one. This is my calculation, like I said, 55 to 60% on Salikov, you know. But a Trinaldo by decision, probably gonna be interesting. If you can find uh, him at plus 300, plus 400 by decision, you know. So these are my calculations, guys. Feel free to pause here. On to the next fight, Turner Bowser versus Ilir Latifi. This is uh, an interesting one as well because Bowser, he's the, the younger guy here, has uh, more potential, you know, to, to win this one. Better striker, especially on the counterpart, he's difficult to, to hit, he has good timing on his counters. And uh, he's a decent grappler, you know, it's not easy to take, hold this guy down, you know, and he's improving quite a bit throughout the years. But uh, he's, quite, he's a guy that likes to, to fight on the outside, be the technical guy, and doesn't impose much his rhythm, you know, he doesn't grapple much on the matchups. So I'm putting him as three stars here as the game plan and execution part, even though he's a quite, uh, he's not a small heavyweight, you know, he's a quite decent size, pretty young guy. And Latifi, 
he used to fight as a light heavyweight and uh, he was a decent size there even though he's not tall he's 5'10 which is quite short I think for a light heavyweight especially for a heavyweight but he has a good ground game you know and a very good wrestling game he's uh, used lots of body locks he's very strong you know you can see him using his wrestling pretty well and then he can mix in single legs he has decent control he, he reshoots so he's the best uh, part of his game is the wrestling He's also not bad counter striking, he has decent power, you know, even though that doesn't translate much as a heavyweight, but still it's not bad, it's not easy to hit, you know, but I think we see Bowser as the favorite because he's younger, he's a little bit bigger, more around, it has a striking, but it's a quite again, tricky to bet because Bowser, he doesn't impose much his game, you know, he likes to trade technique from, technique from the outside, which I think gonna be pretty safe to say that he's gonna have the edge here. But we're gonna see Latifi trying to outgrapple him. We're gonna see Bowser take down defense tested. I think he's gonna be fine, you know, but still, it's a quite tricky fight to bet. I would go Bowser by decision. I'm interested to bet this fight goes to the decision and Bowser by decision or even Latifi by decision at plus 450 if I have this line, all right? I think it's the safest way to go. These are my calculations, guys. Feel free to pause here. On to the next fight, um, Walt Harris versus Martin Tibura. Good matchup as well. I think on the striking part they're fairly pretty, e pretty even. Even though Harry is a more athletic, powerful guy, he doesn't throw uh, much volume. You know, when he starts teeing off, he's super dangerous. You know, he can finish basically anyone. Good straight shots, but he doesn't throw uh, much volume. Whereas Tibura is more like a volume guy. Lots of feints. You know, lots of head movements to get inside. Defensively, they are pretty, both pretty decent. Not easy to hit, you know. They they have good timings, you know. I think Tibura has the edge on the grappling in this matchup. Harris doesn't like to grapple, even though it's difficult to take this guy down, you know, because he's athletic, he's strong, he can get back up. But I think Tibura is, is the more consistent guy here. And uh, yeah, I think Tibura by decision because he's um he's the one probably. Let me just fix this one real quick. So Tiburo is the guy that's probably going to be able to make it competitive on the feet and take him down, you know, and the uh, hair is not going to try to risk much not to get taken down. So it's going to be probably a striking battle for most of the time. And uh, we're going to probably see Tiburo trying to push forward to grapple, to hold the uh, Harris on the clinch or take him down, which gives uh, Tiburo some edge. I have Tiburo as minus 140 favorite. Tiburo by decision is probably the best bet here because uh, Harris, uh, he could win the decision, but I don't think likely. So I think it's quite safe, uh, Tibura by decision. If you like Harris, try to see Harris by TKO, if you can get him at plus 400 minimum, in my opinion. Okay, but I think this fight goes to the decision, is a decent one, because Harris has quite some chance to win this by decision as well. So, but Tibura by decision is definitely the pick here. On to the next fight, in the main event, uh, Jainzinho Rosenstrike versus Augusto Sakai. It's a tricky one, because the Rosenstrike He's super dangerous when uh, when people close their range on him. He has de legit power, you know. It's uh, he he waits. He's very patient, and when he starts swinging. He's dangerous on the front foot. His nose lodge as well. When he starts seeing off, this guy is really he's legit. But he doesn't use much volume. He's more like a counter puncher in this regard. He also doesn't grapple. He just uses his counter wrestling to keep standing to try to land heavy. Sakai has quite the opposite style. Sakai is not the, the athletic power puncher, but he, he wows you with volume. He's a big heavyweight, Sakai is. He's probably nearly the, the weight limit, or at least 255 to 260. So this guy has decent uh, power, you know, but uh, the volume is his thing, he keeps pushing. Now I'm very curious to see what's gonna happen here because Sakai has strong chin and uh, Rosenstrike has so much power. I think Rosenstrike could TKO Sakai, but if Sakai, Sakai keeps the hands up also, which is going to be interesting, Sakai is young, I think he's going to get inside, you know, and make uh, Rosenstrike fight him, which again going to be interesting to see because Rosenstrike going to fight him, so we'll be seeing what's going to happen. I think Cherizinho by TKO is the most likely scenario, even though it's quite a tricky one. The best bet, probably Sakai by decision, because Sakai has good power, but... I think Rosenstrike has a good chin, even though he's been TKO'd quite fast by Nganu, but it was an Nganu, you know. So Sakai has good power, like I said, but it's not like, wow, you know. 
I think Rosen Strike starts getting pressured, he's gonna block most of the shots, start swinging heavy, keep Sakai quite off of him, but Sakai gonna still be touching him more often than not. So I think Sakai by decision is probably the best bet here, guys. These are my calculations. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Sakai by decision at plus 400, I'll definitely go for it, you know, plus 300 even. And uh, Rosen Strike by TKO is also not bad either, you know, so more or less the same odds for me between Sakai by decision and uh, Rosen Strike by TKO. Sakai can also finish uh, Rosen Strike, especially on the l on the late rounds as I have here. Yeah, probably round four, Sakai TKO is probably interesting too. And uh, Rosen Strike in the first couple of rounds, more chances. So it's a quite tricky one, all right? So guys, thank you for watching. If you like uh, this video, please like, subscribe. And I'm just showing to you guys uh, the results that I have uh, on the Patreon bets. I haven't showed this on FC262 because just now I'm recording the video and I had the other video before. So for FC262, it was a quite, uh, quite a difficult uh, card for me. Let me filter this out real quick, guys, to, to show you. Let me exclude the FC150, Friday Night 188. Actually, let me not, you know, because this is just not to hold you guys too much here. So basically, I've seen 262. Let me just try to, to to do this real quick. I was I had quite some losses there, you know. It was nearly minus 3.6, but on the on the last event for UFC Fight Night uh, 188, it was a great card for me. Uh, I cashed quite quite well. It's not showing everything here. I need to. To see this one, give me a second one. So just to show from here, I ended up just taking off the filter. So for FC262, roughly I had uh, nearly 6.5.5 .5, uh, units loss. It was a quite uh, respectable loss. You know, I also bet Bellador, which was nearly half unit loss. But on the UFC last night, was the profit was massive. Was uh, nearly 14 units, as you guys had seen. You know, uh, many. Prop bets cashed, you know. I think it was a nearly 50, uh, nearly 90% accuracy, which was massive. I'm also combined quite a bit, you know. So if you wish to to support me on Patreon and have uh, access to this, uh, feel free to start doing. I have three uh, tiers, you know. And you, as you guys see, I it's nothing guaranteed. There's no guarantee of profit, you know, all the time. But uh, the consistency is guaranteed, as you guys saw on the charts as well, you know. So. That's what I can tell you guys, you know, this is a winning strategy long term. So for the early releases for 10 bucks, you know, uh, you guys can see these videos already, you can get the best odds. For 15, I have also all these prop bets similar to this, and I show the amounts in prop bets for the $15 tier. And 50, 50 is all bets that I have, straight bets, all the events, uh, line by line. So if you trust me, you can basically just follow. All right. Guys, this was a long one because it was a big card. I hope you guys are with me until here. And uh, thank you very much for watching. This is Sam from Throttle MMA Bet, bringing the best, most consistent, and profitable MMA betting channel on YouTube.